So I learned the word chugi yesterday, which is probably itself chugi on some level. Chugi? Japanese sweet potatoes? Where have you been all my life? If somebody plays baby shark at a pool party, somebody's gonna call the cops. Not saying it's me, but somebody will. Oh boy. It's June and I'm already halfway to another birthday. Will you cry with me? Always. Have such a good day. Have such a good day, episode 102. Hello, my friends. Have such Hello. a good day, fam. What up? How y'all doing out there? Yeah. <laughs> Pump it up. What's up? 102 <laughs> in the house. Can't you just feel the energy radiating from <laughs> Heather and I? It's like electricity oh, up in man. here. Man. Can't even control us. Woo. You know what's funny? I listen to so many other podcasts uh -huh. and many of them are are somewhat free form the way that I would say that ours is too. Mm -hmm. And it's always funny to like whatever whatever the actual like point of the episode is. It often takes a good couple of minutes for everybody just to be like, hey, what's up? We're wacky, <laughs> you know, and just kind of like get into it. Oh, totally. And I, I just, I find that it's like that, just that first couple of minutes, like fascinating where it's like, what's our groove? What's our groove? Yeah. Where is it? Where is it? Okay, found it. <laughs> and it totally depends on like what time of day you record, what like part of the week. All the things. All yeah. the things. But if you are joining us for the first time, we are the show that finds the humor in everyday life because adulting can be hard as as you know, and we are not mm. naive kids anymore, Sarah. We just aren't. We just gotta accept the no. reality. I mean, we may be naive about some things. Well, sure. But we're definitely <laughs> not kids. You call me a kid, I'm beating your ass. I'm just kidding. But don't I'm call me kidding. ma'am I, either. <laughs> yeah, I'm not crazy about ma'am. I'm not crazy about that. Or miss. Sometimes there's like a miss. It's like, oh, it yeah, just I feels... I, neither of those are acceptable to me. But the French well, version mi is miss... nice. Like mademoiselle, I'm cool with that. <laughs> It just yeah, sounds right. so much more sophisticated. <laughs> Outside of France, someone calls me Mademoiselle, I'd be like, come on, guy. <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah, it's funny how I'm like, it's sort of like, I, I, I don't like any of the options. If someone calls me ma'am, I'm like, okay, you're trying a little too hard. Yeah, or being there's too There's also that formal. kind of, there's that, I don't know if I want to call it a trend, but mm. it's sort of a, it's sort of a lingo thing that you see when it's like, if... I were to, if somebody were to do something that was like uncouth or whatever, and I'd mm -hmm. be like, ma'am, you know, like that's not appropriate. It, it's, it's almost like a lingo thing. Like, you know, ma'am, this is the Wendy's. I don't know how to explain it, but it's like a, it, you see like ma'am or sir being used to like, uh -huh. you're correcting someone. So I'm like, if someone calls me ma'am, I immediately think it's like, oh, I've, it's not a very nice term, no, even though that's it, not fair. No. But if somebody calls me miss, I'm like, what do you think? I am 14. I know. <laughs> like, like, it's like, I don't like either option. You know, it's like formalities, you know? It's just, and it's yeah. kind of old school. I feel like we should switch it up. Maybe you walk into a store and they're like, hey girl, instead of like, hey ma'am. <laughs> I'd be it's like, just... do I know you? <laughs> My God, a little formal, aren't we? That's funny. Uh, I actually like, I like the, uh, I think you, you know, you see this in uh, the South where you would uh -huh. hear it in the, you know, I always think of it as the South when j kids politely, you know, say sir or ma'am, even to their own parents. Mm -hmm. I find that cute. You know, I don't, it's not something. Sure. If I called my mom ma'am, she'd be like, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. but, uh, but, you know, even when I was five, but yeah, there's something, I don't know. I, I like a polite kid, I guess. Yeah, I do too. It's cute when it comes from a kid though. And it's cute when it's in French, mm -hmm. but there's, there's something about like the old school, maybe because it's so familiar for us and it's so exotic when it's spoken in another language, it just sounds better. And when kids say it, they have cute voices and everything sounds cute. Well, mostly. Yeah, well, hey, ki kids can be non-cute real quick. I was at a kid-friendly <laughs> pool party yesterday, let me tell you. Mm. Uh, anyway, how was your week, Sarah? It was fun. It was super fun. It is hot here, Heather. It is in the 90s. Scorching. Um, uh, as we're recording, as we're recording this, I'm, you know, I'm in my studio, which is very climate controlled, which is great. So I'm not dying or anything, but, but yeah, it is, it is, we're having wow. a heat wave. It's really the first, it's definitely the first in the nineties stretch of days. Do you like it? Um, not really. I mean, I'm, I, I'm sort of like anything above 85 to me means 
I'm dodging the sun. Yeah, me you know? too. I feel like 80. And if I'm not dodging the sun, I'm sweating and I don't like sweating. Yeah. Yeah. Unless I'm working out, you know, and I'm sweating on purpose. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So no, I'm not crazy about it. But I, but I also, where I live, um, you know, I have air conditioning, uh, a, a wonderful luxury. Uh, mm -hmm. Not everybody has that. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm lucky. And I, you know, I'm an early riser. So I got a, you know, I can't walk my dog in 90 degree heat mm -hmm. midday, you know, his feet are going to be too hot on, on asphalt and neither of us are going to have a good time. So it's like, you gotta, you gotta plan stuff, yeah. you know, things got to happen early morning and, and late evening. And I'm actually pretty good with that because mm -hmm. when I lived in LA, um, and you know, Heather, I mean, I would be like doing the big doing the big hikes like super early because after 9 a.m. I mean you're miserable oh, can't yeah. be done yeah you know when it's when it's in this those summer summer temps so it's kind of the same thing around here so it's fun I actually really like it we uh we had a nice little late walk last night when I got back from a party mm -hmm. and uh I hadn't I hadn't walked with him that late where like I'm wearing my headlamp because it's like super dark outside mm -hmm. you know and <laughs> No, no one's ever said anything about my headlamp and I'm the only one in the neighborhood who seems to do it and I just keep waiting for someone to be like, hey, that's a great idea or what the hell? Or hey, ma'am. But no one, no one seems to care. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good evening, ma'am, as I go by. But uh, yeah, it's it's really, I, I love that feeling where it's like, it doesn't really get cold. I love that you know? too. I'm actually a little envious because I mean, today's a gorgeous day and yesterday was also, and I was out in the garden and it was, I had a t-shirt on, like it was warm, but it's not in the nineties. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's when it's, there's days that get into like the low sixties here and sometimes it'll get into the seventies, but it'll still be warm enough for a t-shirt, which is fine with me as long as I'm you know, I can be outside and not be shivering, but you know, it's still like a hoodie morning, you know, it's like chilly in the yeah. morning. Um, but you know, I'm in the North, I'm definitely in the North and I, I do miss warm weather. I, I won't lie. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's listen, you take the good, take the bad. You do. It's a trade off. Everything is a trade off. And when climate change continues Everything's on, a trade off. <laughs> yeah, I will be in yeah. pretty good shape. <laughs> it definitely does. I mean, I mentioned that I learned the word chuggy. Um, mm -hmm. Heather, are you familiar with this word? I'm actually not. And you, I usually pride myself on like knowing some of the like slang lingo, but I haven't heard that. <laughs> Clearly out of the loop. <laughs> I mean, even that sentence itself was like, I normally pride myself on lingo <laughs> knowing. Like, I'm like, what, like, what, like, what, like, magazine article do you read to learn this lingo? Although I, I joke about it. I joke about it, but this is this is something that the New York Times wrote about recently. Although that's not where I heard about it. Uh -huh. So I mentioned I was at a pool party yesterday, a bunch of people, and they're roughly my, you know, my age, and. And uh, except everybody has kids except me. No, that's not true. Not everybody has kids, but most people, most of them at this particular party did have kids. And uh, somebody had had, you know, they were having a conversation and they were like, oh, Sarah would know, you know, Sarah, you know, the word chuggy, right? And I'm like, I don't. What is that? And everyone was like, yeah, oh, see, like not everybody knows the word. And it's one of these things, that, you know, so it's explained to me and it's explained as like, it's because millennials, mm -hmm. that, you know, age group of people who are now in their 30s, and I think they're, you know, at the higher end, it's like, you know, turning 40 type thing. Mm -hmm. uh, millennials are no longer like the young kids that they once were. They're like the generation that are now like the younger generation wants to like point out how uncool they are mm -hmm. in all the variety of ways that they can. Mm -hmm. And so it's sort of, it's, it's a pointed word to describe something that's like not cool but maybe was cool before yeah. and maybe kind of was never cool but still associated with someone a little older than you uh -huh. and like somewhat out of touch but not like oh grandma grandpa kind yeah of sure thing. And, you know like like i was like chuggy and someone goes like you know like skinny jeans and i'm like dog i'm still wearing skinny <laughs> jeans like shut up you know like it's like they're like flattering you know but it was like, or like, you know, Tory Burch sandals. And I was like, ah, yes, got it. I got, I get chuggy now, like kind of, right? It's some TikTok thing that I don't know. I guess like, That's I just funny. haven't, I'm not hip to the game yet, but, uh, but yes, I, uh, I don't even know why I brought it up, but now I'm thinking of all sorts of things where I'm like, okay, I get it. There's some origin of the word. And I didn't even read the whole article enough to care uh -huh. where it came from, but I yeah. think someone made it up. And now TikTok is like, you know, 
catapulted it into the you know isn't it like lingo uncool, sphere like untrendy kind of thing yeah we're just like or has fallen out of favor skinny jeans also is like i remember when skinny jeans became popular and i was like okay well like i have like 20 pairs of like boot cut jeans oh, yeah. that i've like had hemmed so they're like the perfect length for me and i actually haven't thrown really any of that stuff away because i'm just like they yeah. are like really expensive jeans this is before i learned to buy everything <laughs> uh you know secondhand but but uh you know the the skinny jean thing was like, you know, it was sort of like, ooh, it's for like supermodels yeah. and rockers. And there was this whole thing so long ago. And now to me, I'm like, I don't even, I don't know. Well, first of all, it's like, I mean, half the time I'm not even wearing jeans. Yeah, I'm like me too. Yoga pants because nobody sees me anymore. But, uh, but when I do, it's like, I just want something that's like, yeah, I'm not wearing heels. So I can't have anything that's going to like drag mm -hmm. around on the ground. Skinny jeans are great for that because yeah. they're like ankle length. And, you know, nothing that's like, oh, like crazy, like it's been like painted mm -hmm. on me type of thing. It's just like form fitting. I don't know. It's comfortable. Well, yeah. I didn't get the memo about the skinny jeans. Although I do know that like the 90s look is is kind of back with the baggier jeans. I don't feel super comfortable in super baggy jeans. I, I get lost. I mean, I'm kind of small like you are. Yeah. <laughs> Where am I? Like wearing a pit potato sack. Yeah. I mean, I have a couple nice like loose uh, jeans that I will wear on hot days, but I'm still rocking the skinny jeans, but yeah. I am mostly rocking more like yoga pants, track pants, you know, stuff like that. Cause I mean, pff, why bother with anything else really? <laughs> yeah. No kidding. No kidding. So anyway, Heather and I are chewy on some level. It's fine. We embrace <laughs> we it. Totally we rock, rock it. it yeah. You know, it is our skinny jeans. We are you not know, we're not ready, ready yet. We're just not ready. <laughs> we're, not, we're not yet ready for big baggy nineties <laughs> pants. Okay. I actually like was never ready I for that. I don't think I ever wore them either. Yeah, because I'm a tiny person. I'm like the last thing I need is to wear like some like weird oversized thing that makes me look like a small little mushroom lady. Yes, exactly. It's so funny. I have this friend that I used to work with at Snapchat actually, and there's photographs of her. She's very stylish and cute, and she's tiny, and she wears these kind of structured, like you know those like shirt dresses that are like not fitted they're definitely like buttoned down and they're kind of big and she looks great in them if i wore one of those i mean honestly i would look <laughs> i just i don't that is not my thing at all i don't know maybe it's just like more how i feel in it and so you can't really rock it you know and if you you act like you can rock it you probably could but yeah i mean there are certain styles where i'm like i just can't rock it like for example i mean i don't know how like I mean, there's always lots of different kinds of sandals, but when gladiator sandals <laughs> yeah. had become very big, uh -huh. you know, where it's like off most of the time lots flat, straps. you know, with, with kind of somewhat complicated or yeah. intricate straps that go up the ankle a bit. Uh -huh. I love them, or I did, but on me, <laughs> all they do is make me look littler because they cut <laughs> the, the, my leg off, you know, it's like, do you want to look shorter? <laughs> wear gladiator sandals, you know, or yeah. anything that's hitting like mid calf to you. It's just not like, you know, you give up or like long flowy dresses almost always just look really weird on me because what, well, you know, like way. I just, I, I look like I'm so badly for I'm melting. To work on me. Like my friend Shira who, Shira Gill, she has like a really cool kind of interior design company and she's cute. She's definitely somebody who is a bit of a, I love that detail about Shira. I know it's going to be about flowy dresses, but also an interior designer. <laughs> well, she is. She does. She has like a really big following now. She started her company long time ago. I'm very proud of her. She's actually. What's the name of the company? Shira Gill Home, G-I-L-L. Oh, well, if anyone's looking for cool stuff. Yeah, she's really cool. She, she actually just released a book and like she's just. I'm really proud of her. She did this all by herself, you know, self-made. Anyway, so she is really into fashion and she's really into that like less is more. So have like a capsule wardrobe, like a very small amount of clothes and just kind of repurpose accessories and stuff. That's kind of how it started. And she's totally skinny jeans girl. She's mm -hmm. as small as we are, maybe smaller. And she never wore dresses. And we used to talk about it all the time. Like, yeah, I just can't wear a dress. I want to. And I see that cute flowy thing. It looks so comfy. And just yesterday she posted, she's like, I finally found a dress that I love and feel good in. It looks great on her and it's a flowy dress. And so I'm like, hmm, maybe I should try this again. <laughs> I mean, it is a good plug on her Instagram. I might buy the dress that she's promoting, but. Yeah, I, I mean, I have a few. Like for example, mm -hmm. at a pool party, you know, where you're like, you might even like your bathing suit's wet anyway. Sure. And like, so you're just kind of throwing something over it and you don't want it to be like, you know, 
like no, no belt no, no. is yeah. gonna like cinch it at the waist like forget it that kind of thing yeah like it it works sometimes but sure it does it does pick and choose pick and choose. that well anyway uh enough about fashion <laughs> although this might you know your your week may have been full of fashion heather i don't know but how was it oh god no <laughs> you want to know what my week was full of sarah what's that i will tell you i will break it down for you lots of country life let me tell you <laughs> what uh, a shock see. I am shocked, <laughs> shock and I awe. Know, isn't it? I'm not talking about painting though. Okay, so you all can, right. we're, 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 we're evolving, count your blessings. we're evolving. We are, we are. <laughs> yeah. Although every time I see, every time I'm watching a movie or just going into a shop or a restaurant, but I look at the wall paint. I was in my yoga class yesterday and I'm like staring at the really beautiful white, you know, ceiling. I'm like, wonder what white that is. <laughs> is that the white that I used in my kitchen? I mean, it's just like, yeah. I'm ruined. I am totally ruined. Anyway, so my exterminator. So we've had a lot of things go wrong. And you know this, Sarah, Airbnb Follies, we talk about it all the time on the show. Yeah. I've got a couple of vacation rentals. And there's just all, you know, you have your weeks. Some weeks it's very quiet. Other weeks you have guests who are very nitpicky, or maybe they're just you, they see a few ants here and there and they don't care. They just let you know. They're like, we're not upset. There's a few ants in the corner here. Mm. And then there's the guest who's like upset about it. And so you have to give them a discount. It's a whole thing. You know, ants are a thing that uh, supposedly, you might know this, Sarah, because you've had your moments with ant swarms, um, but they're the hardest pest to get rid of. They come back again and they love rain and they love water. And so I've had to have a exterminator come out like three times over the last few months and it's not that bad it's just not great for a guest i i, I understand yeah, nobody wants nobody wants indoor ants even though it's you know it's like no. you didn't do it on purpose but nobody wants that no but it's so cute because my exterminator is literally a cowboy like literally <laughs> he's every we communicate via text and so we're you know we've been back and forth for a while now because you know have to have him come back out he literally thumbs up like what our communication with a cowboy bitmoji it's like thumbs up happy cowboy it's hilarious oh so like he thinks of himself as uh, a cowboy oh yeah no he is he rolls up he's got cowboy boots and <laughs> like, a hat I mean, a cowboy the text how modern <laughs> <laughs> uh, pretty funny little country interactions but also we had a fun broken pipe situation oh. um on memorial weekend which i mean listen it wasn't horrible. It just our water was out and we had to fix it and we had to find somebody who would come out uh, over the weekend. And, you know, we, we always find the humor in this stuff. It's like kind of hilarious because we're such newbies at this country thing. Yeah. You know, we're used to city things. When you're in the city, the city takes care of it. You have a broken pipe, you, you know, you call whoever it is, the water company. But here you kind of have like workmen and you have to get you know, certain people from certain mom and pop places to come out and help you. So, you know, country life. So I knew about this potential water problem. A while back, my main workmen were like kind of puttering around the properties, kind of showing me some things. And he's like, so one of these days we we're going to need to dig in this general area to find the water line. And I'm like, uh, <laughs> okay, that seems destructive because there's like azaleas and hydrangeas and all these yeah. plants and flowers. I, and I'm oh my like, gosh. what do you mean? Just I so day? know that reaction really where you're like, okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's a lot of that all the time. I'm like, what? And so thankfully my boyfriend is an amateur workman because he has to be out here and it like forces us to like learn these things. Mm -hmm. So what happened was thankfully he saw some water kind of trickling down the driveway and he knew from his minimal experience up here that, you know, he need what you do is you find where it ends and then you dig up a hole and you have to see where that break is and you see where the water's kind of like collecting. And so he thankfully did all the recon on it. I didn't really have to deal with it. I just kind of had to coordinate it from the house sort of thing. Um, you know, he's like digging a hole. It was a whole thing to go to the hardware store, shovels and clamps and just all this stuff. and really the moral of the story is we clearly don't understand the water system here and it scares me and my dad was the only one that like knew even his wife didn't know and so well i mean I, like that I, I don't know what the water system here is i mean I, I i know what happens when it breaks but i mean i have no real knowledge sure. of what's going on you know and like who laid it out and why and it concerns me though because i'm like i have to know these things to be able to know how to troubleshoot it and fix yeah. it and so it it makes me uncomfortable it's like not understanding something happening on a set where you have to be aware of like everything because if you're not you know you won't be able to like even direct anything if you don't 
you know, know how things work. And so basically we lucked out, we got a guy out here who knew our water system, person who knew it the best, who has history here. But it made me really realize, like, I kind of talked to my boyfriend, I'm like, we need to kind of divide up property ta tasks because, you know, in the city, again, you don't have to deal with your garbage really. You just put it in the, in the, you know, in the garbage bin. But like here, you got to bring it out to the street and you have to be on top of it. And so we kind of divided up, well, at least it was my idea. The manly stuff goes to my boyfriend. So like I said, water system, because it involves the pump house and, you know, all these things and shovels and the garbage the generators you know things that kind of you could just imagine like you know there's a big storm and it's like nighttime like he would probably go out there and fix the generator he'd be the one you know me i'm like growing things i'm growing our food and i'm doing the interior stylings and the bookkeeping and all you know washing the sheets and i'm not saying that i'm doing like the girly things i'm not like washing the floors and like doing these things i'm just saying what the property what is stuff? girly about washing floors? <laughs> i know what you mean A any of these things you the roles I mean. could be reversed it's just how you have exactly. decided to to divvy them up between the two yeah of you. because i don't because listen i am a somewhat tough girly girl i've got muscles i'm strong on some of for my size i can lift things but you know there's a lot of stuff that is like you know kind of outside and digging holes and stuff that might be like a little bit over my you know skill and strength level mm -hmm. so it just sort of defaults to a man with like stronger arm muscles you know kind of thing um so yeah that was kind of my weekend i mean in between you know the bike rides it was beautiful weather oh and then i wanted to mention it's the season up here where we hear the sea lions barking and it's so cute i it's honestly it's neck it's one of my favorite noises next to canadian geese honking as they go by i think it's just it's a soothing sound for me <laughs> well i'm glad i'm glad you had a good week overall yeah. uh, learned a little bit about a water system um <laughs> sounds like something you were gonna have to do anyway yeah. you know at some point it's funny i um I, this is a few days ago i had already forgotten about it but I, uh, I didn't, we didn't have a water issue, although we did have like a pretty mm -hmm. major plumbing issue a few, few months back. Um, but no, this is <laughs> that damn pool. Never get a swimming pool. Uh, it will only <laughs> cause you pain and grief. Uh, but, uh, the pool here, the cover has been failing mm -hmm. for some time and it's a huge pool. It's so, and at the yeah. cover, you know, it's a motor kind of thing where, you know, it's open and closed and it's, uh, the cover has like a crack in it and the crack has been steadily mm -hmm. just getting worse. And what happens is, is that water comes up through the crack because the pool cover mm -hmm. is right on top of the water. And then if enough water is on top of the cover, the crack gets worse mm -hmm. because now there's weight on it. And if you try to open or close the cover with all that water on it, then you put all this pressure on the motor and the like cables. So this is something it, it kind of reminded me of this when you were saying that, you know, you're, you're the, the gentleman you were talking to was like, we're probably going to have to dig this up at some point. And you're like, uh, <laughs> hopefully never. And the pool maintenance person, um, who comes every Thursday months ago, I mean, even like a year ago was like, kept pointing it out to me, like, you're going to want to do something about this because it will not fix itself. It will only get worse and it'll eventually mm -hmm. stop working. And I was like, yeah, I don't <laughs> know. It seems like a big job. And now it's, a, it's at the point where, well, it's actually getting mm -hmm. redone in a couple of weeks, but I scheduled that appointment a while ago because the pool cover people are just really busy. You know, like when you finally are like, okay, we're pulling the trigger on this, then they're like, okay, we're looking at like nine weeks out. And you're like, oh shit, okay. Now I have to like deal with a cover that's pretty much failing the whole time. Luckily, so right now there are there are people in in the uh, mm -hmm. here on my property and it's so hot because normally it's like I tell people, you know, just when you're not using the pool, I mean, it's so much prettier to look at mm -hmm. when you just leave the cover open, but when you're not using it, overnight or you know if you're just gonna be out for the day or whatever just close the cover because then leaves don't fall in it and if you want to keep you know as much heat in it as possible which does matter to people especially when the air is a lot colder you know you close the cover and mm -hmm. you know it retains heat better but it's so hot right now that i can get away with it be saying to them do not fuss with that cover because it'll just break on you and it'll be like half open and will stop working entirely or like i have to come out with a bucket and like 
get all this water off the top uh -huh. like as quickly as possible and then like run up to where you know you control the stupid cover like before like the crack seat lets the water seep in again <laughs> you should have seen me the other day it was pure comedy but i did oh, I burn bet. a lot of calories doing it so all was not lost but yeah like it's just stuff like that where i was like you know jake did warn me so long ago that it would get to this mm -hmm. point and he was right and you know and of course my landlord is like he doesn't really want to move on of stuff course. until it's an emergency because that's most how landlords. most people yeah. Yeah. react to things right yeah they're like oh well let me know when like it's a real problem mm -hmm. and then i'll pay and so <laughs> it's like hey yo it's a real problem but it's like really my problem not yours you write the check but i'm the one who but suffers do you ever feel like anything's like over your head like in terms of because you're like the only one there managing it and you kind of have to handle anything big and small do you ever feel like nervous that it's something i guess you could call someone uh to help you but i mean i'm not like fixing our plumbing well sure you know i don't even know how to well i did unclog my own <laughs> toilet some time back and i felt pretty good about that but yeah i mean there are i mean there have been a couple times where there's just been like a weird little thing here and there like the furnace in one of the houses was like i don't know there was some like mm -hmm. fuse thing that like burned out and like i like f because somebody th like remotely like helped me to like pinpoint that problem and i went to the hardware store and i like brought the broken fuse thing and i was like do you know what this is and they're like yeah you want a new one great and like i like put mm -hmm. it on the furnace I mean, I'd sound like a complete idiot when I'm describing this but like it was like magic to me where I'm like yeah. oh my god I fixed it like like the problem was determined I found the solution like hardware oh stores that's why they're just magical to me I'm, I'm there like, like 10 times here's a, week. a part do you have more of those parts and they're like yes we do and they're so helpful totally well I mean hey you, you better be working in a hardware store you gotta love it but uh yeah no I I mean I I'm really sort of like uh, I mean, if something was an ext like there's been generator issues, yeah. our generator Good. is now fixed. And that is a huge deal because in the summer, um, like not even storm related, but you know, mm -hmm. you're gonna have rolling blackouts yep. because you know, fire season and whatever, like California, people are used to that. And last year that that did happen more than once. And you know, we have a generator, which if it worked, no, no, like literally for after like three to four seconds not, mm -hmm. life doesn't change i mean you kind of hear the generator but like everybody's cool but our generator was broken and so yeah mm -hmm. i had angry guests about that and it's like i cannot fix a generator and the generator people aren't gonna come within an hour of you calling they <laughs> yeah. might come a month later when they have time because everybody's mm -hmm. generator is failing right because the power is out like it's the whole thing is just like you, you got to be somewhat zen about it and just be like, yo, we're in the country. Like people aren't like yeah. waiting in the wings for like this one house to have an issue. It's like we're one of thousands of people with you issues have at zen. any given that's moment. And that's My just the way it goes. My dad was always so zen because I would see all these things hit him, like his phone would ring off the hook, you know? And I'd be like, dad, how do you deal with this every day? Like he just had a lot on his plate. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's, you you just, he, he would let things roll off his, back like he just was like yeah just stuff happens all the time and i'm i'm learning that i think i'm yeah. definitely getting to be more patient for sure well i'm glad to hear it <laughs> so heather uh did you used to watch friends i feel like you're not a friends person and i don't know why i'm saying did. that but i did but i watched oh, you did? it okay. also as an adult like i didn't watch all the episodes i don't think like i, I wasn't as into it as you were back then i think i watched more of them as an adult well well i wasn't all that into it either oh, okay so yeah other people were but uh but it was just certainly a show that uh, you know i watched i you know not every episode but mm -hmm. it's like i knew who all the characters were you know it was a super popular show i knew the general sure. you know story arcs and everything uh but yes it is you know in reruns i have probably mm -hmm. seen every episode i mean it's kind of like exactly. seinfeld where it's like uh you know if it's on i almost always am like yeah, oh, yeah i remember this one you know and i kind of have it on in the background it's familiar when i was traveling many many years ago in southeast asia this is a very rando story but it's super true in Laos, mm -hmm. the country um and that is how it's pronounced mm -hmm. but people say laos also <laughs> fine but you know whatever uh but uh, there is uh, there's a little town 
and it's very much on the backpacker mm -hmm. circuit because it's beautiful. It's like, there's a lot of little sort of like kind of chill out restaurant -y, you know, shacks and it's along this great river. And so people are doing like, you know, you go like inner tubing and you hang out in the river all day it's, and it's super beautiful. And it's like, it's just, it's kind of a, you know, mm -hmm. a stop off, a popular stop off. And I was there and uh, yeah, it's like very outdoorsy and uh, also, we were we were there. I think we were there in like a shoulder season mm -hmm. of monsoon season. So it was like it wasn't like pouring rain all day every day, but mm -hmm. that was pretty common for that to happen for like a few hours. And I mean, it is mm -hmm. torrential rain. Super warm outside, like so it's monsoons. like you're not like like freezing and huddling or whatever. But you're like totally scrambling to get under an awning, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. And this town you know everything was kind of open air but for whatever reason and i don't i don't know where it started but all of these kind of like hangout places where you know it's sort of the end of the day everybody's been like hiking or biking or you know in the river all day so you're kind of just like tired and you know weary traveler would like gather at any number of these just sort of like i don't know like mm -hmm. thatched huts and they didn't even, it wasn't even like really seating. It was just like kind of pillows on the floor and sit around and watch Friends story. reruns. Yeah. It's so bizarre. It is. It, I don't know if it's still like that because I haven't been there in, you know, 15 years. But it was like, and it was like a, it was, they were like DVDs wow. and there'd be like a, you know, like a old TV, like somewhere, you know, like an old, some, you know, up, up high enough. Yeah. So everyone's just kind of watching it. And like, it would just be like, <laughs> friends reruns like just back to back and like eventually like somebody would need yeah. to like change the disc you know and That's like great. hours would go by and we were all and people would sort of be half watching it wasn't like it was like ooh riveting tv like shh <laughs> be quiet friends background on. noise it was just kind of like everyone was like half watching it and like engaged enough to like laugh at certain moments or whatever and i was so i got such a kick out of this because it wasn't just oh if you go down to the corner this one place has mm -hmm. like friends on the tv it was like 10 different places, like everyone was doing it. Like one place did it and like clearly like the other, you know, the people, you know, making some food and pouring some coffee on the other side of the street were like, wait a second, like everyone's <laughs> over at that place. Like we should do friends reruns also, you know, and it became this thing. And then later on in travels, you know, cause you, you meet other people and you're like, oh, where have you been? You know, and where are you going after this, right? You're also backpacking and it's like everyone, you know, where you go like, oh, the friend's town. And people go like, yeah, yeah, I was there. Yeah, the friend's town. And it was just so weird. Okay, so so anyway, uh, yes. So I know friends much more in my rerun life than, you know, I, I ever did back in the, you know, mid nineties when it came on the scene. But I did watch the Friends reunion uh, earlier this week. Uh, mm -hmm. It was kind of a big deal. And I actually did not realize that, and I won't like spoil it, or there's not really anything to spoil, but like I won't go on and on if, if it's something that you're not going to watch or you just haven't yet. But I thought, because I had heard like, oh yeah, all the Friends characters are going to get together for a reunion special. And I'm like, yeah, oh boy, you know, sometimes those reunion specials are like not that great. Um, but I thought, I don't know why I thought this, but I thought that it was going to be that they were mm -hmm. in character and they were all like, there was going to be some storyline of that's where everybody was. And so that's why I was like, oh, if they don't get this right, yeah. it's going to suck because, you know, when things end, they end for a reason and, you know, yep. your imagination does the rest, yep. you know, like the breakfast club, right? You don't want to see them all the next day. No. You know, it's like, it, it's perfect where it ends. And I was wrong. It was, it, it was like, look, the the actors were looking back on, mm. you know, their 10 years on extremely successful long running sitcom, you know, and like interpersonal relationships and blah, blah, blah. And so I was like, when it started, I was like, oh, this is uh -huh. not what I thought it was going to be at all. I oh, actually really liked the, the special. Yeah, it was like they, 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 they got creative with it. There was definitely some corniness. Yeah. And there's definitely some moments where you're like, the actors like can't help but be their characters a little bit mm -hmm. because yeah because part like an actor kind of brings part of themselves to roles anyway and you know yeah. them so much more as the character anyway it's just sort of fascinating i'm also such a big jennifer aniston fan and always have been i just i mm -hmm. she's just one of my favorites and i i'm just like 
yeah, like, I think you are Rachel. Like, that's actually you, <laughs> like, in so many ways. Yeah. Like, how are you not her? Like, you kind of start to, like, deconstruct, like, let me see, like, where the real you, like, wouldn't fit in the show somewhere because you're actually so good at doing that. That'd be a fun interview to really, like, unravel, like, what she thinks about her identity and, and uh, yeah. you know, the character. That'd be interesting. Yeah. And obviously everybody's older and I mm. do not want to be like, oh, like plastic surgery shaming or anything. Uh, so I'll keep this vague. But like some people look kind of weird to me. Uh, yeah, you know, totally. it's just it, whatever. Uh, you know, that's just that's how it goes sometimes. Hollywood. It's funny. It's like you can't win, right? You're either like, whoa, she's no. had a lot of work done, or she looks really old. It's like, exactly. it's like, what do you want from you us? Win. You know, like I know it sucks. You know? <laughs> it's like leave everybody alone. And I'm super guilty of that, and sometimes I feel bad about it. So I don't want to be like, oh, you know, guess who looks like shit? But when people are older, you look older, no matter you know on what whatever level you look older. And we all go through it. And there was like definitely some moments in the reunion because there's like flashbacks and like storytelling and they even do like table reads of like famous scenes mm -hmm. but they're doing it as like in present day it was very creative i thought i whoever like produced that oh, special wow. i'm like this is huh. actually pretty fun i'm having a good time um even though it's sort of uncomfortable the whole time because you're just like do yeah. you even like each other like it's hard to know because <laughs> you kind of see these glimmers of like I think some some of them like each other and and others maybe they don't want to be there. Oh, I'm sure you know? there's so much to unpack there. Like, I mean, so many years of just drama on set and whatever their interpersonal relationships outside of that. And yeah, I know some of them were closer than others in real life. But, you know, I saw the trailer. I It's so funny, Sarah, because I kind of had the first, same first impression as you. I'm like, I really love the show. I think it's great. And I, have like I said, I've watched more as an adult, I would say, like on the reruns. But the trailer was hokey, you know, it just was like, eh. I, I thought it was gonna be more of like maybe a storyline or like an, another episode or, or something. I don't know what I thought, but I, it just seemed so cheesy, you know? But I'm glad to hear that it you liked it. There's so definitely some cheesiness. To watch There's it. definitely some cheesiness, yeah. but I did- Can't avoid I, it. I, 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 yeah, I, I enjoyed myself. Okay, cool. It was, it was a good time. Um, is it like an hour? How long I is it? I don't remember. Yeah, it was like, it was like an hour or an hour and a half or something. It wasn't, okay. you know, it, right. was, it was substantial. It was definitely, it was at least an hour. Um, yeah, I didn't, okay. I didn't pay attention to the running time, but, but anyway, so friends reunion, whatever. So that happened. And then I mentioned uh, earlier in the show that I had gone to this pool party yesterday, which I did. And the people who ha were having the party are good friends of mine. I see them all the time. And pretty much all of the other guests, because I didn't really know who was going to be there. It was somewhat last mm -hmm. minute. Um, but everyone else I knew, well, there was one couple that I was meeting for the first, well, there was two couples actually, but there were, I don't know, maybe 15, 20 people there. It was a substantial number mm -hmm. of folks. And I pretty wow. much knew everybody, but like, these were people who, it wasn't even like, oh, I haven't seen them because of the pandemic. It was, there are more people that I, I, it's a friend of a friend, you know? So yeah. I know them. But I haven't seen them in years, you know, um, mm -hmm. big San Francisco crew. And I haven't lived in San Francisco in, in some time, but, uh, but definitely I knew them. And so as I walked in and, you know, it's really hot, we're in a heat wave right now. So it's like, I got a big floppy hat on, I got big sunglasses on, whatever. And like, there were like, and I was sort of on the late side. So a lot of people were already there like eating lunch and stuff. And I walk in mm -hmm. and I kind of like look around where I'm like, uh, oh my God, lots of faces. There are some familiar faces. Where do I start? Oh my God. You know, it's like, because <laughs> oh, my fine. muscle of like, you know, catching up with like a bunch of people at once oh, is yeah. like, is pretty oh. weak these days. Totally. And it was funny because, and like a couple people were like, oh my God, Sarah, like I didn't even recognize you because you're like almost like incognito with all the stuff. I'm like, yeah, let me take my glasses <laughs> on, my hat off so you like realize it's me. Also, we haven't seen each other mm -hmm. in five to six years. And it yeah. was, it was great, but I, I definitely, uh, I had, I had these moments where I would like, I would kind of, you know, I'm sitting at the edge of the pool, whatever. And it's like, whoever's right next to me is like who I'm talking to. Because I yeah. just can't handle like, you know, the catching up and the hugs with like more than a couple people at a time. It's, like, how have you been? And you're like, I mean, yeah. what kind of question is that? It's kind of exhausting. It's super exhausting. <laughs> like, where do I begin? But, I'm, but I like, but I want to know how everyone's been too. It's like, 
it's just a whole like where you're like, all right, let's get into it. And and um and it was it was really great. It was super good vibes um all around. Yeah. So you know I'm not like complaining that yeah. I like had to catch up with a bunch of people. But there was one point where uh, one of the folks and again yeah I haven't seen him in a long time and like the last time I saw him and his wife they had like a baby and now they have that baby is like seven. And they have another kid, you know, <laughs> who's also older than yeah. a baby at this point. You know, so I'm just like, wow, it's clearly been a while. And mm. one of the questions was was like, you know, and ha- you know, how have you been? A pandemic. And a lot of people don't even know that I live in the woods. And you know, most people are like, you're in LA. And I'm like, well, it's going on a couple years ago now. And they, the one of the questions was like, so like now that you know things are you know somewhat open and you know. We're, we're mm-hmm. seeing on the horizon normal life or whatever that is, you know, but like f- people are starting to feel good again, you know, like what's going to be your first trip? And I was like, uh, yeah. I don't know. Um, I don't know. And it was kind of like, like he, it was, it was a guy, he, he kind of asked me and I was just sort of like, I don't, I, I didn't have an answer. I had, I don't have a sure. trip planned. And he kind of asked me again, you know, a couple of minutes later, like, so like, but like for the summer, like what's your like kind of fun like you know you got like a, a th- like a summer plan you're gonna go anywhere and it kind of came around again where I was like this is like s- such a weird thing but I like all of a sudden on the fly said that I was gonna go to New York in October which is like mm-hmm. I don't have a plan to do that but I like mm-hmm. felt like he, because he like came around to the question again like I needed to have something and so I just like, yeah, totally. I felt myself like making it up. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I think I'm gonna go to New York in October to see some friends. And he was like, oh, that's cool. That yeah, cool. that's a nice time of year there. <laughs> it won't be so hot. And I'm like, yeah. And I'm like, why did I even that's say funny. that? I mean, I could go to New York in October. That's a thing I could do if I wanted to, but like, sure. I don't actually have plans to do that. I might not. I don't know, it was just- it was social like pressure It was pressure, just, like, it was of. so weird where I was like, I felt like I was having this like, reunion with a bunch of acquaintances you know yeah, I mean it was a reunion totally. of sorts right like none of these yeah. folks except you know the people throwing the party are like I'm super tight with but I mean I really like them you know and yeah. I want to talk about stuff but I was like I am like keeping up with the Joneses weirdly right now and I don't know why <laughs> and you know like no one else has and like why do you feel the pressure to yeah do like I should have just been like I'm not doing shit <laughs> And then just leave it at that. You're like, I'm going to be potting my plants. I mean, that is pretty much what I'll be doing. But who knows? Maybe I'll go to New York in October, Heather. The world is my oyster. You know what? I'd like to go to New York in October. It's funny. I have some friends who are so good at planning. We've talked about this on the show before. And I would say that I'm a pretty good planner with like work stuff. But when it comes to my personal life and planning the year of vacations, I have friends who literally will have everything planned to the end of the year. And usually the following spring where they have like flights booked hotels booked and they get so excited about you know these things in the calendar and i get like envious I'm like how do you get ahead of that like how do you know what life is going to do six months from now because i think for us our life changed a lot being producers and we were doing gigs and things just changed so much for us you know i guess maybe other people have more stability in their jobs or like in their routines that they're able to do that but i envy that like i wish i could like plan further out because i'm hearing a lot of people saying oh we're going to hawaii in july you should come with and it's like oh i can't i have too much going on like i can't how could i even buy a ticket somewhere right now like I can't leave and I'm like why why can't I be that person (laughs) so I don't know I guess everybody has different freedoms and that's a goal of mine I guess I would like to be better at like planning out vacations I don't know how you are with that Sarah I think you're similar to me I don't know I mean I've been off the vacation track for some time I mean I haven't left the country in a while um yeah. Yeah. I, I actually have an expired passport right now, which normally would fill me mm. with so much anxiety. But like it happened last year and I was like, well, I'll get to it eventually. You know, <laughs> like I'm like, oh, my God, my passport is expire, still expired. Though. Like that would not a couple years ago. I never would I be caught with an expired passport. Mm-hmm. But I also did a lot more international travel, sometimes for work. You know, I I mm-hmm. I was able to to do a lot of that, you know, at, at one point, which is I mean, it depends on, you know, what you're doing there work wise work is work but you know I would sometimes you know I would know like oh I'm gonna be in London 
you know, for these days, six months from now, and I'm going to tack on like exactly a vacation it's to so that because i've already gotten there you know and so like some you know some business will have paid for me to get there so like let me work see so, i'm good at that yeah, yeah. But like i don't <laughs> i don't know i mean i i i plan vacations as i need to yeah yeah i mean i think it's easy when you have that schedule with work and i would do the same thing but now i think it's the nebulousness of the calendar you're like well i don't know what's going to happen in august like who knows Anyway, speaking of social engagement, Sarah, I don't know if you've had this experience during the pandemic, but obviously, you know, we've met some people for the first time in this time of masks, you know, so you meet them and they're wearing, you're both wearing masks and you don't really know what they look like. Uh, I mean, you know, maybe their eyes and, you know, their body language, whatever. But, you know, I've, I've met a handful of people who I had not seen their faces. Mm -hmm. And uh, one guy in particular, he, he's actually a regular at our cabin, but I had only met him for the first time last year. Or no, it was earlier this year, I believe. And, you know, we, I took him on a tour with his family of the property. He, he loves it up here. He's, he's pretty obsessed. He's kind of looking for real estate on the street and everything. So we've been in touch. He's a, he's a cool guy. He's, uh, he actually lives really close to where I lived in Beachwood Canyon in Los Angeles. You know, he lives down there. He wants to spend half his time up here. And so we've kind of become friends like remotely, but I spent a handful of times with him on the property, just kind of talking and hanging out with our masks on and hats on and sunglasses on and, you know, really incognito. Um, it's just funny how recently, you know, masks are coming off in certain situations. I mean, obviously we need to still wear them when we go to the grocery store, when you, you know, use the bathroom at a restaurant, but when you're sitting at a table now at a restaurant, you can take your mask off when you're with your party. And so he invited us to dinner and it was kind of funny at first because I'm like, I don't know this guy that well, but you know, we, he met Elijah and, and we got along and you know, I feel like I hung out with him enough and he really insisted on taking us out and um, really nice guy. So we went out to a nice restaurant this weekend and it was lovely and we, you know, sat down and took our masks off and I was like, whoa, not, not whoa in any one particular like way or another but it was like oh that's what you mm -hmm. look like you know because i'd never ever seen his face yeah. i mean frankly i don't even think i saw his eyes because he was wearing sunglasses so it was kind of an interesting sort of second impression like a second first impression yeah. kind of thing um with someone who you you never saw the face and i was thinking a lot about like how you know, eyes, you know, I think a lot of people have been talking about this this year because, you know, you miss people's smiles because they're covered by masks. There's been a lot of, you know, uh, articles about this. But, you know, you, you always think like the eyes are very expressive. You know, when you see someone's eyes, you can recognize somebody, right? But I find it to be so interesting like that. Sure, that's true. But like the nose and mouth and like someone could look so I don't know how, if you were to create a face from like say you're looking for a criminal and you're like doing a drawing of someone's face like you change the nose or the mouth and they look so oh, different for sure. they look like a totally different person sitting at an intimate dinner with a totally new face was it was a bizarre experience for sure well yeah but i've definitely had especially like in the grocery store or wherever where it's like everyone's wearing a mask and you know you, there's some eye contact being made because it's like you know, you're kind of trying to scooch by somebody or yeah. you're talking to the butcher or, you know, whatever, whatever it is. It doesn't have to be mm -hmm. the grocery store, but but anything, you know, where there's interaction. And yeah, you're, I feel like uh, a lot of us are, you know, you're really trying, like the eye contact is that much more important because you're reading mm -hmm. signals, you know, body language. Yeah, exactly. And sometimes people, you know, and you like, the smiling thing is like, you can mostly tell when someone's smiling because of how their eyes change but like we're mm -hmm. exaggerating it at all you know and like there's kind of like you know like almost like there's a little like hand action and nodding and mm -hmm. it's all like affirmative yeah. i'm giving you affirmative you know <laughs> or or the opposite right like no 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 not yeah. not no we're this is a negative reaction yeah, you're like compensating yeah it's like an overcompensating yeah. thing but then there are these times where like and I know I'm guilty of it because it's like, you know, you when you pass somebody, whether whether mm -hmm. they strike you as interesting or it's just nothing, like you're taking stock of humans, other humans. We all do it constantly. Sure. That's what we do. Like, oh, mm -hmm. that person looks a certain way. These are the details that mm -hmm. I have just gathered about this person as we walk past each other, never to be seen again. But like with a mask, mm -hmm. there's 
there's like you think like well everything except nose and mouth are still all the same details but there's so much less information mm. that you're gathering and so it's yeah. like yeah like when someone looks at me and they're looking super directly at me you know sometimes i'm like weirded out because i'm like why are you looking at me like yeah. that but i know that they're doing <laughs> whatever i'm doing like we're all doing the same thing <laughs> And like, yeah. there's probably very few stink eyes I'm actually getting, but sometimes I'm like, yeah, I don't like that. I'm getting a weird vibe on this person. But like, sure. but like, what what vibe would that be? There's no vibe. Mm. Anyway, yeah, so mm. I, uh, I I get what you're saying. And it's kind of like, like uh, I, ha I had this, um, well, I wouldn't call him a friend, but somebody that I was like doing some work with. And uh, this is like not, this is pre-mask, pre-pandemic, whatever. Guy mm -hmm. always wore a hat and he kind of had long hair. And it was just sort of like, mm -hmm. it was sort of a Wayne's World type of a look, right? You kind of got shaggy hair and you wear yeah. a baseball cap. And one day uh -huh. he took off his hat and he was bald. And he just, he just had, you know, he had a bald, he was balding, you know, but it was bald on top uh -huh. and he had shaggy long hair. And it was just like, wow! Yeah. <laughs> You know, because it's a very like mind blown. Yeah, because I just never it was because it's like, I don't know why I thought they had a full head of hair. It doesn't matter. I just never saw yeah. that detail. And it's kind of specific, yeah, exactly. right? Because he was like, listen, I don't have a full head of hair, but the hair I have, I'm going to make it long. You know, that's the way yeah. I'm going to wear it. But then it was like, he really didn't go hatless very often. You know, so it was like, mm -hmm. it, it really like totally. it threw me. So I imagine you <laughs> hanging out at dinner with a full faced person. You're like, whoa, look yeah. at all these details. And I'm you. like two feet away from him. Like it, we're sharing oysters and a bottle of wine. It's like, whoa, because like you, you don't really go out to intimate dinners with strangers. I mean, he's not a stranger, but in a way he was because I never knew his face. Mm. But any of you out there are wonderful patrons and listeners. If you had a similar experience to this, I'd love to hear about it. We'd love we to would. hear about it. So email us at hi at have such a good day.com early and often. Yeah, Please. do it, do it, do it. We're desperate to yes, hear from you. But we love, <laughs> we love email stories. Um, for those of you who are in our Discord, and again, you can join our Discord if you are so inclined um, by becoming a patron, $5 and up level, uh, $5 a month. So it's, you know, it's, it's, it's not, it's not a large pot. Uh, yeah we, we uh we, yeah no kidding uh yes if you can if you can become a patron i know we say it every show so we'll, I'll, we'll keep it short but patreon.com slash have such a good day is where you can find out more about directly supporting us you get an ad free show uh you get the show earlier than you know the masses um if you'd like to join our discord um and you can contribute five dollars or more per month uh we would love to have you there we kind of we kind of Sometimes we're like off the rails in our conversation in Discord, and sometimes it's like an extension of what we've talked about on a previous show. And totally. it's very, yeah, like our show itself, very free form. Uh, and it's super fun. And the <laughs> more of you in form. there um, that have something to say, or even if you just want to lurk all good, it's just it's just a big fun family, yeah. and uh, we love you. In fact, we do have a new um, a new addition to our to our Discord. Hi, Kathleen. What's um, up? Good Kathleen? to see you in there. Actually, I haven't seen you in there yet, but I want I want you to be in there. Um, so another lady. So yeah, awesome. say hi to Kathleen, all the Discorders, and again, everybody else. patreoncom slash have such a good day. We're always looking for new patrons. We do want to um, have as much direct support as possible and give you guys some goodies in the meantime. Yeah, and it's really funny to see what triggers a conversation in Discord. Like you were saying, Sarah, sometimes it is very show related. Like certain little, even small things trigger like, you know, some back and forth, like what you talked about last week with the dog poop etiquette conversation. That's been pretty fun this weekend. There's been a lot of, um, you know, back and forth about and opinions and, and it's 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 all in good fun. We're all friends. Yeah. and. And um, I enjoy it immensely. Yeah, yeah. So yeah we're not us. arguing with each other in there. I mean, who knows? You no. know, <laughs> anything's possible. But yeah, that's you can definitely if you not want. the point. Uh, yeah. Listen, I uh, I don't want to argue with anyone ever, but sometimes you can't get around Never. it. But yeah, I'm not. Yeah. we're we're all very zen. We're all very zen. We are. Um, we are. We and when we aren't, we, we yeah try to talk ourselves and each other off all of the time. We cry it out, you know. Yeah. Sometimes you just gotta, you gotta cry. You gotta do it. Well, you know what I gotta do, Heather? I gotta <laughs> pee. So let's finish this show. I gotta bounce too. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We've talked it out. But uh, another episode of Have Such a Good Day. 
has come to a close, but don't you fret. We'll be back next week with episode 112. Ooh, I love it. Well, in the meantime, I will remain Heather forever. And I will be Sarah. Have such a good day. Bye.